Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome to my 11th TTM video, where I'll be sharing some TTMs I got through the mail today, and also some autographs I purchased. And also, I'll announce the winner of the 100th subscriber contest. Let's get right to it. First autograph I got back from purchasing is a purchase I made here. The Sports Illustrated cover of Mr. George Foreman, George Edward Foreman, who's 71, born in Marshall, Texas, won the gold medal at the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico City, and got famous as well for carrying the U.S. flag around the ring, bowing to the crowd on all four sides. He said that was his most proudest accomplishment ever, winning the gold medal, more than even becoming heavyweight champ. His first fight was in 1969 against Donald Walheim in New York City, where he knocked him out in the third round. On January 22nd, 1973, in Kingston, Jamaica, he defeated Joe Frazier, the heavyweight champ of the world, knocking him down six times in two rounds to become the champ. He had two title offenses as champ. In September 1973, in Tokyo, Japan, he knocked out Jose King Roman in one round. And in March 1974, in Caracas, Venezuela, he knocked out Ken Norton in two rounds. On October 29th, 1974, in Zaire, he lost to Muhammad Ali, the famous Rumble in the Jungle, where he was knocked out in the eighth round. In 1977, he retired after losing to Jimmy Young in Puerto Rico. Ten years later, he came back in 1987. On November 5, 1994, in Las Vegas, Nevada, he knocked out WBA and IBF champ Michael Moore in ten rounds to become heavyweight champion of the world again. He finished his career with 76 wins and five losses and is a member of the Boxing Hall of Fame. He was a great fighter, one of my favorites, I should say. This cover was from 1975 in December. It says, I want Ali again. Of course, he never got the chance to fight him. And I don't think he would have fought him like he did the first time around. Second uh, purchase I made was former NFL player, Green Bay Packer, Jim Grabowski. Try to get a little closer there. James Stephen Grabowski, Jim, or nicknamed the Wolf. 75, born in Chicago, Illinois. Went to William Howard Taft High School in Chicago and the University of Illinois. He's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame, and the University of Illinois' All-Century Team. He's also a member of the National Polish-American Sports Hall of Fame. In 1966, in the NFL Draft, he was selected in the first round, ninth overall by the Green Bay Packers. That year, he was also selected by the Miami Dolphins in the AFL Draft. He was the number one pick overall in that draft. Played for the Packers from 1966 to 70. Was in the backfield with Donnie Anderson. They were nicknamed the Gold Dust Twins. And finished his career in 1971 as a member of the Bears. Injuries really hampered his career and cut it short. He rushed for 1,731 yards and 8 touchdowns. Had 82 receptions, 675 yards, and 3 touchdowns. And Jim Grabowski again. I like all those old Packers who played with uh, under head coach Vince Lombardi. And the third and final purchase I had that came in today was this man, this quarterback, gentleman, Marlon Oliver Briscoe, the magician. Marlon Briscoe, 74, was born in Omaha, Nebraska. Went to Omaha, Omaha South High School and went to the University of Nebraska at Omaha. He quarterbacked his team three conference titles and left with 22 records there and is a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. In 1968, in the draft, he was selected in the 14th round, 357th by the Denver Broncos. He was their third-string quarterback until September 29, 1968, in a game against the Boston Patriots. The starter got hurt. The backup was playing bad, so Coach Saban put in Marlon Briscoe to quarterback the team. His first play was a 22-yard completion, and in the second series, he... Drove 80 yards down the field in a touchdown drive, and then ran for 38 yards in the game, including a touchdown. He was the first African-American starting quarterback, threw 14 passes in 1968 and just five starts, four against the Buffalo Bills on November 24, 1968, which is still a Bronco rookie record. He has to be released after not being named the starter in 1969 and went to the Buffalo Bills. They converted him into a wide receiver because I had a quarterback by the name of Jack Kemp. His NFL career played with Denver, Buffalo, Miami, San Diego, Detroit, and finished up with the New England Patriots in 1976. 
Made the Pro Bowl in 1970 and was all pro that year with the Buffalo Bills. Two-time Super Bowl champ with the Miami Dolphins. Had 224 receptions, 3,537 yards, and 30 touchdowns. And he threw for 1,697 yards and 14 touchdowns. I have him in the Dolphins uh, picture. He signed 17-0, making a catch, but I like this one. Been trying to get it for a while. And now the TTMs I got today. The first TTM came from the great state of California, and it took eight days. It's free. And that's Mr. John Capaletti. John Capaletti is 67, and in two days, on August 9th, will turn 68, was born in Upper Darby, Upper Darby, PA. I played at Penn State University, was a defensive back his sophomore season because Penn State had two pretty good running backs ahead of him, Franco Harris and Lydell Mitchell. But once he became a starter, he did a great job with the Nittany Lions. He was the Heisman Trophy winner and dedicated his Heisman Trophy to his brother Joey, who was dying of leukemia, a very famous speech he gave. His brother, Joey, sadly died on April 8, 1976. Uh, his, his and his brother's relationship was made into a movie, Something for Joey, that starred uh, Mark Singer. In 1974, he was selected in the NFL Draft in the first round with the 11th pick by the L.A. Rams. He played with the Rams from 1974 to 78, missed the 79 season because of an injury, and finished up with the Chargers from 1980 to 83. His college career, he rushed for 2,639 yards and 29 touchdowns. And his pro career rushed for 2,951 yards and 24 touchdowns. He's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the Italian American Hall of Fame, and the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. Again, there was no fee, and it took eight days. Got him to sign the uh, Legends card here with the Rams. Very nice. And also the Penn State card as well. Like both of those, got a good signature. The second return I got today is former quarterback Jerry Tagg of the Green Bay Packers. This came all the way from Omaha, Nebraska, and it took 10 days. Jerry Lee Tagg, who's 70, was born in Omaha, Nebraska at the Air Force Base there, went to the University of Nebraska, and quarterback Nebraska to two national championships, 1970 and 71. And on Thanksgiving Day, 1971, was the quarterback for Nebraska in the game of the century, as it was known, against the uh, University of Oklahoma. In 1972, in the NFL Draft, he was picked in the first round, 11th overall by the Green Bay Packers. He played with the Packers from 1972 to 74. Head coach Dan Devine left to coach Notre Dame, and then Bart Starr took over and cut him. In 1975, he played in the World Football League with the San Antonio Wings and finished his career in Canada, playing for the BC Lions from 1977 to 79. Again, Jerry Tagg took uh, 10 days, no fee, and he was nice enough to sign both cards. And nobody signed the index cards, not Jerry Tagg or John Capaletti. <laughs> but that's okay. And the next one took seven days, came all the way from Washington State, and it's of Hall of Famer Lenny Wilkins, the great Lenny. Signed two cards. Also didn't sign the... Um... It does look a little better. The light off it. Uh, didn't sign the next card either, but that's all right. Leonard Randolph Lenny Wilkins is 82. He was born in Brooklyn, New York. Went to boys high school in Brooklyn. His basketball teammate, one of them was future baseball player Tommy Davis. Went to Providence College, where he's a two-time All-American. And is a member of the College Basketball Hall of Fame as well. In 1960, in the NBA draft, he was selected in the first round sixth overall by the St. Louis Hawks. He played from 1960 to 75 in the NBA. Played with St. Louis, Seattle, Cleveland, and Portland. Was a nine-time All-Star. Was the 1971 All-Star Game MVP and made the NBA's 50th anniversary team. He started his coaching career in Seattle while he was a player. A player coach in 1969 to 72. And then coached Portland in 1974. Afterwards, he retired and he stayed their coach until 1976. He re returned to Seattle and coached them winning an NBA championship in 1975 when his Supersonics defeated the Washington Bullets. Then coached in Cleveland, Atlanta, Toronto, and finished up with the New York Knicks. He was the 1994 NBA Coach of the Year, four-time All-Star Game coach, one of the top ten coaches in NBA history. 
and coached the uh, 1996 U.S. Olympic team in Atlanta, Georgia. Finished up with 17,772 points, 5,030 rebounds, and 7,211 assists. His coaching career won 1,332 games, a 53.6% winning percentage. He's a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame as a player and a coach. And he was kind enough to sign the NBA Hoops card with him as a Cavs coach. And he also included his Lenny Wilkins Foundation card there. And then signed this upper deck card, which I really like, of him in St. Louis. And he's a good, good TTMer. Free of charge as well. Now, it's time for the giveaway. What are the prizes once again? We got... 8 by 10 the former Chicago Cub, Andy Pafko. Got a Hall of Fame postcard signed by Bobby Doerr. Late Bobby Doerr there. The cards we have are Dwight Gooden signing a Topps card. We've also got Kenny Anderson signing a Legends Archives card, I should say. Excuse me. Got a Dave the Hammer Schultz card. This is from Dave the Hammer Schultz. Comes with his certificate of authenticity. Also got a Bobby Shantz card, 1963, with the Cardinals. Got baseball Hall of Famer Harold Baines signed a card playing with the O's. 1990 Fleer signed by former NFL running back Tom Rathman. And we got a Topps card signed by Ed Two Tall Jones. And we got a Swell card signed by baseball great Dick Grote. And also two packs of opening day cards that I got when I bought a big box at uh, Walgreens, I believe it was. You know, those hundred card things that came in it. So now we will clear the way and get the box out to put the names in. All right, let's get the box. We'll have my son come down and do it after, my youngest of my sons. Here he is. Hello, Robert. And let's see who we got here. We've got Walkenbach. These are all people who left comments on one of two videos, or both. We've got Alan Twitchell. We've got Sport Card Collectors 959. We've got Baseball fans, 75. We've got Christopher's Cool Cards. We've got Poor Man's Stack. We've got Remember the Greats, Sports. We've got Hoss of Cards. We've got Clump O'Hare. We've got Bear Cards, 34. We've got Rob Hirsch. We've got Reindeer Studios. We've got Ground Zero. We've got Jay. We got baseball card illustrated. We got Lynn Coy right there. We got Chris Graffs 101. Seeking hidden gems. We got Brett Stone. We got Derek's cards. Brandon Stebbins, GWAR5911, and Tony, Tony Black. All right, and shake up the box. All right, do your job, Robert. Stick your hand in there. Don't look. Pick one. Who do we got? Baseball fans75, you are the winner. If you would like uh, to claim the prize, all you got to do is send me your address, or, and I will send it out to you. I'll mail it out Monday. 
So congratulations on winning. Congratulations to everybody else that uh, participated. I appreciate that. I thank you, I should say. You all have great channels as well. I enjoy watching them and learning quite a bit. For everybody, I want you to take care, be safe, and see you the next time.